I built the house next door to me and threw away my only key. Come on in and stay, the perfect getaway. Don't look over there, there's nothing to see. Just settle in, you're welcome and it's free. The house next door is close to me The woman I'm supposed to be Fabulous and fair It's easier to share When the me you share Is really me You That's are I listening am. to House Next Door From Me A song from the album Relax, Nothing Is Under Control The voice you're hearing is Jean Louisa Kelly, today's special guest. The album was released on May 6, 2016, and it's available on iTunes as well as her website, jeanlouisakelly.com. Now, back in 1989, Jean was a high school sophomore who got a chance of a lifetime to work with John Hughes and John Candy. Uncle Buck was her first film role. She played Tia Russell, Buck's niece who was having a hard time adjusting to a new life away from her hometown. When a family emergency called her parents back to Indianapolis, Tia was extremely disappointed to find out that she and her siblings would stay behind with Uncle Buck watching over them. A teenager with an attitude clashing with an unorthodox tough love adult gave the film plenty of memorable scenes. What'd you blow all that makeup for? We're just going bowling. I'm not going bowling. Come on, it's a great sport, and it's virtually impossible to get pregnant while doing it, if you catch my drift. You're disgusting. I'll die before I go anywhere with you. It's going to be fun. They have rent issues. And rent a foot disease. We've done the battle of the wills. The deck's stacked in my favor. You're just going to lose again. Try me. How'd you like to spend the next several nights wondering if your crazy, out-of-work bum uncle will shave your head while you sleep? See you in the car. Jean is on the road, but she is taking a few minutes to talk with us today about playing Tia on Uncle Buck. Hello, Jean. Thanks for joining us today on Blast from the Past. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you. I'm excited to talk to you, too, because this has uh, been a favorite movie of mine for a long time. And it's been great looking at uh, all the things you've been able to do since then. And I'm looking forward to touching on that as well. But starting with uh, Uncle Buck, if I understand correctly, that was your first movie, your first step into anything on screen. And what a first step. I mean, you you decide to do this and you find yourself reading and doing an audition right with John Candy, if I'm not mistaken, which is quite a first step. That's re- that's true. That was my first. Um, it was diving into the deep end. It was my first screen experience. Uh, I won't say it was my first audition. I had auditioned for a few films before television things. And I had an audition with the casting director. And then I was brought back to meet with John Hughes, the director. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I was brought back uh, to do a screen test with John Candy. And it it definitely does not normally happen that way. Uh, The stars were aligned. It was really a gift from, I consider it a gift from the universe. And it's harder. It's like lightning in a bottle to get yeah. those things to come together. Well, and I have to think, too, I mean, I think about how, you know, in the film, your character, uh, Tia, has kind of a chip on her shoulder because she's had to move to a new city and a new life at a very young age. And this was something that was happening to you as well. I mean, you were a high schooler yourself. You were able to relate to this because you had moved from Massachusetts to Maryland at the time. Uh, was being able to relate to That's Tia, right. one of the many reasons why they thought you'd be ideal for the role is because you were right then kind of relating to some of the things she was going through? Well, I, I can't speak for them, but I, I can say that I, I did get it. I understood those feelings, and if we're lucky enough to make it to adulthood, we've been through the teenage years, Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's tough, you know? It's, it's really tough. I've got a 13-year-old right now, mm. and, and I can see... You know, you see all these things happening, and when you're in it, you don't really know that this is just, it's just a tough period. Uh, there are so many different things happening, but I was i was definitely, you know, I, was, I actually had that experience, and I had moved before that. I, I went to four different high schools, actually, so wow. I knew how challenging that could be, and um, 
it was just a really good match. You know, yeah. I think it's very rare that I don't know if it always matters like how good of an actor you are. Sometimes it's just you're just the right match. In fact, I think that's always what it is. Sure. No, absolutely. <laughs> it's, always, it's just the matching and it's just the luck of the draw. Uh, and then you have to, you know, fill in the blanks with the skills that you have. But when it's a, a match like that, it's, it seems to be part of the plan. Yeah, and you know, uh, throughout most of the film, we see Tia at times be, uh, I guess you could say, less than pleasant sometimes around the people around her, especially her mom and, of course, Uncle Buck. Can you just talk a little bit about playing that type of character? I mean, you were obviously surrounded by people who are good folks off camera, so was it uh, tough to act sometimes so sharp towards them, or was there some fun of having some of that attitude? Oh, it's fun. I mean, playing a bad guy is so fun. Yeah. It's, it's always more fun to play a bad guy than a good guy. I've one time I, I did a, a TV movie where I played a, a woman who abducts a girl I know. who wants to harvest her baby and then wants to kill her. I mean, that was so much fun <laughs> because, you know, you just don't get to do You're not allowed to do this stuff in real life. Yeah. And, you know, you're not allowed to talk to people that way. And it's just liberating. But, you know, it's all inside us. You know, we, we all have that, that stuff going on inside and, and how great to have a place to put it. No, absolutely. And that was uh, that was a Lifetime movie, right? Oh, the crazy one? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it having one of those titles. <laughs> one of those. Yep. <laughs> those are a lot of fun. I bet you know, they are. They're great. They're quick. I, I, for three weeks of work, yeah. you know, I, I get to remember, you know, what I can do. And I'm not too far away from my family. And, um, it's, you know, it's juicy stuff. It's yeah. Fun. Well, um, when you think about John Candy, what's what are some of the things that come to mind right away? Well, he really, uh, he improvised a lot. And he and John Hughes had this great relationship where they would do the script and then they would improvise. He would just, John Hughes would just keep the camera rolling and, and John Candy would just improvise and keep going and just keep talking. And there was a lot of stuff in the movie that... I don't think was actually in the original script. Yeah. Um, and there's, you know, most of it was, uh, I think it was really well written, but, um, he, you know, he had those skills. And the other thing I'll say is he was just a lovely, lovely person. You know, it was hard for me to, I, I didn't know the landscape of that. Um, you know, I, I was a theater kid Yeah. and it's totally, it's very different, very, very different. So uh, I had to learn how that whole beast works, and he was just kind, you know? And it's, you know, I think it's also when you're a kid and you're vulnerable and you don't know what's going on, it's challenging. Even if stuff is great, sometimes it's hard sure. to learn something new, and um, he was just a lovely man. He seemed like he was, and he is definitely dearly missed, and I... um. Mm. I read an interview where you mentioned that like one of the scenes that you got to improvise or involve some improvisation was uh, the bowling alley scene. And I assume you were talking about kind of that back and forth the two of you had about Shanice and him offering you the cigar and that whole bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, he did all the work. All I had to do was sit there and respond. <laughs> <laughs> and just say something snarky. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. I mean, I really, because I wasn't really talking to him much anyway, yeah. I, it wasn't terribly challenging for me. He did all the work on that one. But it was fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did you improvise the line of, uh, does that mean you improvised the line of maybe if you got married, you wouldn't be such an a-hole? Oh, no, no, no. That was written. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I mean, either way, it's a good answer, but... <laughs> it's great. It's great. <laughs> well, were there any other improv scenes or just scenes in general that are especially memorable to you? Um, I think, for me, most of my stuff was pretty scripted. But, you know, I think that some of the stuff with where he's talking to the kids, I think he was allowed to go on. And I feel like... <laughs> There was a scene where he was on the phone with um, Elaine, mm -hmm. uh, who played my mother, mm -hmm. Elaine Um and he was saying, I played, and, you know, how's the toilet work? And, you know, I had a lot of cheese 
the other night. Yeah. And I don't think that was written. I don't I don't <laughs> think that John Hughes wrote I could be wrong, but I'm I have a feeling that the, the line about the cheese was John Candy. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the kind of thing that it's just, it just it rings organic. <laughs> Yeah, that's that whole thing where he's, uh, you know, she's thinking about writing him blank checks and he just goes off on this tangent about, you know, well, you know, I quit smoking cigarettes and I'm onto cigars and now I'm eating a lot of cheese and you think that's an allergy or something? (laughs) Yeah. Well, um, yeah, well, I mean, and he was just naturally, naturally good at that stuff. But what about the scenes with Bug? What do you remember about Jay Underwood? Oh, he was a good guy. Um, I had the scene where we're like... You know, it was basically like us making out. Yep. That was what that was about. And it was always like cold and at night. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, he was a lovely guy. Uh, I don't really know if I have any stories for you on That's that. That's okay. One. I think I read recently that he's gone on to be like a Baptist preacher or something. I think I saw that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I assume this has to be quite the experience for you to look back on now, considering that it was your first film, and there was, you know, you just had those great people around you. I mean, you had John Candy, John Hughes, and you you were there with Macaulay Culkin and Amy Madigan and so many other notable people. This really has to be just quite an experience to look back on even now. I know. I know. It really was a blessing. It really, I've been very, very blessed. Gabby Hoffman, too. Yes. Yes, and Gabby Hoffman. Now, you went on to do several more TV and film projects since Uncle Buck. Was this something that really helped kind of catapult you into more consistent work for TV and film and that, that aspect of your acting career? Well, I it's definitely helped me because it's such a recognizable credit. Mm-hmm. Um, and because it has resonated with audiences over the years. I mean, it's played every Thanksgiving and um, it's very fortunate that that was that and Mr. Holland's Opus just happened to be yeah uh, movies that that get played because they're family friendly and they're mm-hmm. sort of timeless. Very much so. so. Um, that's been very helpful to me. I will say that in my career, I, I've done almost everything a person can do to not take advantage of any momentum. <laughs> <laughs> I did that movie. I did that movie, and then you know I had moved high schools for yet the fourth time. As soon as we moved, I went away and did that movie, and then I came back and I said, "I want to finish high school and be a normal kid, whatever that means." Yeah. And go to college, and I didn't even study acting. I mean, I took some classes, but I I want to have a normal college experience, and then we'll see. Yeah. And, and I did, and. And, uh, you know, things cooled. And then I was just fortunate enough to get Mr. Holland's Opus, Mm -hmm. uh, which was another sort of fluky. uh, Somebody else had that part, and she had to drop out, and they needed somebody, and I auditioned. And, you know, a couple weeks later, I was off to Portland to, to shoot that movie. And so that was another huge gift. And, uh, and and then I, I don't always take advantage because I'm always so protective of my personal life. Sure. I think because I started so young and I see how you give up a lot of your personal life. Yeah. And that's irreplaceable. Yeah. You know, this is the thing that people struggle with. You don't get it for nothing. Like, there's you can't do everything. So I've always been uh, ambivalent in some ways about pursuing the career full heartedly because I really value, um, you know, my family connections and my, you know, just having my, having my life. So, um, that's kind of a long answer to that question. That's okay. No, it makes perfect. It makes, it all makes perfect sense. <laughs> I understand what you well, mean. Well, I know I've got kids, you know, and, and it's working. It's, you know, I've got a, I'm still doing stuff and I'm, I'm being creative on my own too. I'm, I'm actually working on an album right now, and I've done I've done four albums. Actually, this is my fourth album. Yeah, I mean, I, I started writing music, and so that's one of the ways that I've managed to stay creative while you know I'm the mom. Yep. I I pick them up from school. I I I have babysitters when I when I need them, but uh, I'm I'm doing that, and I love that. You know, I'm so happy that I can because then they're going to grow up and then I will have some more time. 
Yeah, I mean, and music has also been a big part of your career that's grown over time because you kind of started with that with some great work on Broadway, and then you recorded this children's album called Color of Your Heart, and that evolved into contributing songs to even some of your own film productions. And like you said, you've just recently released um, a six-song EP called Relax, Nothing is Under Control, and I love that title, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) I really do. (laughs) Maybe that comes from having kids. I don't know. That sounds like somebody dealing with kids would say. They are the teachers. Yeah, so, I mean, that seems to be a big passion, too, that, like you said, has allowed you to stay creative, and, I mean, it seems like you're really enjoying that aspect of your career as well as uh, being able to produce music. Oh, it is. It's fundamental. Uh, The the singing is fundamental, but it's true. Having children is what kick-started that. I mean, I always sang, Mm -hmm. uh, but I never never wrote music, and, and my kids were the inspiration for that album, and that turned into, you know, I just had the courage to start writing other music. And so since then, I've released two two EPs of music that are not children's albums and a couple of songs for films. And this album that I'm working on right now is Standards, uh, which people, people have written into my website and said, when are you going to do an album of Standards? They've heard, you know, it's been 20 years and so now I'm finally doing it and someone to watch over me will be on there and it's so great it's so much fun that's sort of at my core is is the music so I'm actually on my way to my voice lesson right now oh nice (laughs) okay well, and people can get all of your music on the on places you can always get music, right? Like iTunes. I know you can get it on iTunes because I've seen it on iTunes and listened on iTunes. Yes, it's all it's all on iTunes. It's probably on. Yeah, I think it's on Spotify too mm. because uh, it's like a digital distribution. And then I think that yeah, I think that I I sell CDs on my website too. Right. So. Yeah, and we will link that uh, on our site as well. Uncle Buck is such an enjoyable and memorable film, and you were definitely a big part of that. You were memorable in that film as well. So it was great to get a chance to talk to you about it, and I really appreciate you uh, taking time to talk with me about it today. Uh, Well, thank you for asking. 